Today, we're gonna to go through the most Googled retinol questions from the science behind retinol and its benefits, how to pick the right retinol for your skin, including product recommendations for each skin type, concern, and budget. Non-sponsored, of course. I'll demo step-by-step -step how to use it to get maximum benefit, how to reduce common side effects, who should avoid it, and what not to combine it with in your routine. So what is retinol? Retinol is a form of vitamin A, a powerful ingredient in skincare that promotes cell turnover and increases collagen production. What you may not know is that retinol is only one of the wonderful vitamin A skincare ingredients. It's the most popular, but also the most irritating. Here is a vitamin A family from the weakest to the strongest. Starting off with retinol esters, moving on to retinol, then retinaldehyde, followed by retinoic acid. My favorite for skin of color is retinaldehyde as it works 10 times faster than retinol with zero irritation. So how does retinol work? Retinol works by penetrating the epidermis, the top layer of skin, and the dermis, the deeper layer of skin, to speed up cell turnover, allowing all skin cells to come to the surface faster and to be shed, allowing younger, plumper, juicier skin cells to come to the surface. It also boosts collagen production, which strengthens the skin's foundation and reduces signs of aging. By increasing cell turnover, retinol helps to clear pores and reduce acne. A common misconception is that the dermis thins, but actually epidermis smooths out due to the shedding and the dermis thickens as more collagen is produced. Over time, the epidermis will also thicken after one cell cycle, about six weeks, which is how wrinkles improve. This accelerated skin cell escalator means the pores are unclogged, helping with acne. Hyperpigmented cells shed faster, helping with hyperpigmentation and texture. Who should use retinol and at what age do you start? Teenagers and young adults can use it in short doses to improve acne and scars. Adults in their 20s and 30s looking to prevent early signs of aging and maintain even skin tone. Mature adults like me over 40 years old can use it to reduce deep wrinkles and improve skin elasticity. So how do you choose the right retinol? Beginners that start with low concentration of 0.1%. Intermediate can use concentrations of 0.3%. Experienced users may upgrade to retinaldehyde of 0.05% to 0.2%. In skin of color especially, avoid higher than 0.3% retinol, which is also now banned in the EU and will be taken off shelves from November 2025. As there are higher chance of reactions as percentage of retinol increases, our melanocytes are larger and they are easier to trigger after any form of irritation or inflammation. This is why we have to be more careful with our skin. As I always say, one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. Retinol product comparisons. The criteria I use to assess retinol products are airless packaging to keep retinol stable, effective percentages to ensure that you see results, and NAIF safe. That means no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, and no essential oils to minimize chances of irritation. I'll also give additional points if incorporating other beneficial actives. For beginners, I recommend these four products. Go for ROC capsules, not the serum, as this contains fragrance. It's 35 pounds for 30 capsules, 0.1% retinol is in an airless pump, plus ceramides to help reduce irritation. I love it. Next is Fab Skin, 0.25%. It's more for sensitive skin. It's got colloid oats in it, glycerin, peptides, and allantoin to smooth and hydrate. Next is Verst. The second ingredient is sunflower seed oil. It's an excellent emollient. Retinol at 0.1% plus bakucho, glycerin, and shea butter. It's excellent for beginners. Lastly, it's Kiehl's, retinol 0.1%. Glycerin, butylene glycol, which is a humectant holding water in the top layer of skin, plus niacinamide. It's a lovely combination for acne. Plus they added adenosine, which is an anti-inflammatory. However, it is very expensive at 72 pounds. For intermediate or advanced, I recommend these four products. The Ordinary 0.2% Retinaldehyde, 15 pounds for 10 mils. It's expensive for this brand, but it is nice safe. There aren't any other actives, but it's a beautiful, non-irritating formula. Fab Skin Lab with 0.3% retinol plus retinol propionate in it. It's NAIF safe. It doesn't have any other actives in it, but it's a simple and effective formula. 
Paula's Choice 0.3% Plus Bacuccio. It's got tetrahexyl decaloscorbic, my favorite form of vitamin C, peptides, licorice root extract. I love it for anti-aging and mild hyperpigmentation. Biosense, 0.5% retinol plus retinaldehyde. They don't give the exact percentage breakdown, which is a little bit annoying. They do have squalane and glycerin, which are hydrating. I do love the combination, but this is gonna be the most irritating option out of the four. Next up, how do we use retinol? How often? Do we sandwich or do we not sandwich? Start slowly. Use a small amount once or twice a week. If you're a beginner, then apply to dry skin as there'll be less penetration. If you're intermediate or advanced, you can apply it to damp skin. Then moisturize on top. If you have sensitive skin, I recommend sandwiching. That's moisturizer, retinol, then moisturize on top. Start slow. More is worse in this case. At the beginning, in the first week, apply one night a week. Second week, apply two nights a week. Third week, apply three nights a week. Until you apply every night except for the nights you exfoliate. If you experience any irritation or flaking, pause the retinol and apply a fatty moisturizer twice a day, such as CeraVe, Cetraben, Vani Cream, or E45, until the skin barrier has repaired itself. Then you can start again with the retinol very slowly. The big mistake is forgetting the skin is more sensitive the next day, so be vigilant with your sunscreen. SPF 50, broad spectrum. Before we get into the good and bad combinations with retinol, don't forget I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every YouTube video. So when you subscribe, come and hit that notification bell so you know I'm here to answer your questions. So what are the good and bad combinations with retinol? Starting off with the good. I love glycerin for hydration, niacinamide to help improve the skin barrier, peptides to plump the skin, and allantoin, which is anti-inflammatory. The ingredients to avoid using are AHA, such as glycolic acid, and avoid ascorbic acid. Use other vitamin C derivatives. Avoid enzyme peels, fragrance products, or denatured alcohol in skincare and in makeup. So retinol sounds great, so who should avoid it? Avoid if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Retinol is generally not recommended during pregnancy due to the risk of absorption in the bloodstream and potential harm to the baby. Opt for Bacuchol plus peptides instead. So how long does it take to see results? Visible improvements can be seen after eight to 12 weeks of consistent use, i.e. two to three cell cycles. Next, watch how to get glass skin. 